Do you have a choice to watch this video? Or was it the wonderful thumbnail that I created that made you watch it? Or the title called to you because you're curious about the concept of choice? Or you just find me handsome? Probably not that. In this video, I will walk you through whether choice exists or not, why it is good to have very little choice in life, and how you can make sure that you reduce your choices to what really matters. In Drift, you have no other choice but to watch it now. My name is Greg Angelbert. I'm a life and personal finance coach. My life purpose is to help and inspire people to live with personal agency. I share what I know about personal finance and coaching on a cup of coffee to help you live a life of purpose and build up your wealth. What is choice? Let's start with a simple definition. A choice is an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more possibilities. The choice is an act. It manifests itself as a change in a situation. Choice is also attached to the concept of free will, literally meaning that we are free to make the choice that we make. Though is that true? One school of thought, determinism, basically states that everything that we do is already predetermined. Everything has been calculated somewhere in the subconscious mind and everything we do is already pre-ordered. If you have ever done some computer programming, you're familiar probably with the concept of if statement, which means that you have variables that are reacting to the if statement that you're putting. And for us, you can consider that those if statements are algorithms in our brain which are already there, and basically the environment is bringing the variables that eventually make us do, act, and make the choices that we make in life. This is deeply disturbing if you believe in the concept of consciousness because effectively you are only watching a process, an automaton of you acting in a certain way without really having any say. Another way to look at it is that we are never really free to make the choices that we make because they very much depend on the past that we have, so our genes, what we are made of and also our past experience. And on the other side, it's based on the environment in which we are, which is influencing the way decisions pan out. I personally find it hard to believe that on one side, I can have this concept of consciousness for myself, you know, I think therefore I am, and at the same time that I'm an automaton. So I choose to believe in the illusion of choice, if it is an illusion. And if all choices are performed with those algorithms in our brain, those learning algorithms, then our conscious mind might be able to actually influence tinkle with those different algorithms, which then would result in us making different choices. That's confusing. It's a problem with no choice. It might feel good to believe that we have no choice, that we're just floating on the current of life, and this current is bringing us wherever it will. My observation as a life coach is that people who believe that are actually the best at complaining about their life pretty much all the time. Why? because they feel that they have no power or agency about what is happening in their life, that they can't do anything about it. In a previous video about motivation that you can find here and here, I talk about the psychological need of autonomy. It is our need to act on our own, to be responsible for our own actions. If we do not fulfill that need in our life, we tend to feel pretty miserable. Believing that we have no choice in life is in a way believing that we have no autonomy, which is a pretty sure way of feeling miserable with ourselves. And studies have shown that when people are given no choice, they cannot really act, they have no choice at all. That is when they feel at their most unhappy in life. You're liking this video so far, so you know what to do. And also do not forget to hit the subscription button and to put the notifications on if you want to receive more content like this every week. Also check out the other YouTube videos in the description from other YouTubers. There are plenty of other content out there about the same topic. The problem with too many choices. Choice equates a lot to freedom in modern thinking. And freedom is considered as the ultimate good. So freedom equals wealth. And choice equals wealth. Well, not quite so. The first problem is when we have a lot of choice, we tend to be paralyzed. Research shows that the more choice we have, the more we stop in our tracks. We're paralyzed, we don't decide. We actually don't pick a choice. And that makes sense. It becomes information overload for the algorithm that we have in our brain. The second problem is even if we have a lot of choice and we pick one, we end up by being dissatisfied with that choice. That is because we tell ourselves we could have made a better choice considering how many choices we had in front of us. Finally, we also expect a lot more when we have more choices. We tend to believe that more choices means more quality of choices, even if that's seldom the case. And we get this feeling of everything was better when everything was worse. One choice. So how do we get out of the conundrum of no choice versus too many choices? By only having one choice in front of us. Let me explain. 
Why can't we take a decision or choose? Because essentially, we do not know what we want. Now, this is more profound than it seems. Knowing what we want is knowing the path we want to take for everything. Does that sound daunting? It is at first. That's why you need to build a system that eventually will give you only one choice. The first step is to know who you are and where you're going. So know your life purpose, the meaning of your life, know your values, know your strengths, know your interests. If you're not sure about any of that, go check out this video here and here where I explain how you can find your life purpose and be your life goals. And that step will already help you to know what to say yes to and no to. And step two is to understand your principles, to build principles. They are verbal algorithms, if you will. They are short sentences which basically summarize the values that you have and translating into the way you want to act. For example, a principle might be that you never want to eat animals. And this would result in only one choice every time you would have a menu full of meat in front of you, which is to walk away. As you codify your values, your life direction, what's important to you into those principles, you will be left with more and more simpler choices in your life. It is effectively because you are building algorithms for your brain so you can take decisions much faster and in a much simpler way. Another point to consider is the fact that we already have tons of algorithms in our brain. We're just not aware of a lot of them. So decode your own hidden algorithms. Spend some time to understand the steps of how your brain is taking some decision without you necessarily thinking about it. For instance, I notice that if I exercise a lot on a Saturday for more than an hour, for instance, my brain will automatically tell me that I should be eating some sushi and having a beer with it. My brain is basically transforming my need for proteins and carbs into an image that it's seen in the past saying, well, that was satisfying when I needed this for the body. So that doesn't matter. I mean, I could just go for the sushi and have the beer. But also I can decide that if I don't want to have the beer, you know, I say, no, I don't want to have a beer right now. I can decide not to have it. And then I would need to take another decision to say, okay, how do I get more carbs for my body? Once I'm conscious about a mechanism like that, then I can decide on my own. I can make my own choices. The final point to consider is your environment. It might well bring too many choices in front of you. I'm looking at you, friends, with 200 sorts of yogurts in a supermarket. So think about putting yourself in a place, surrounding yourself with people who are creating the environment where you're reducing the choices or you're making choices which are akin to what you want in your life. The clearer you are about who you are and where you're going, the clearer and simpler your choices will be. And one final point for today is remember that if you feel that you do not have a choice, you might not have used enough your imagination to find choices. As Viktor Frankl says in his book about surviving the Holocaust, which is called Man's Search for Meaning, at the minimum, you have the choice about how you feel about a certain situation. So pause and reflect now. What are you going to do with the information that you've learned today? What are going to be the choices that you make based on what you've learned today? Make sure to write that down for yourself and also write it in the comments below. I hope this video was enlightening about how you can choose to effectively have only one choice. And I'll see you next week on a cup of coffee for more personal finance and coaching.